So here at Bright Agritech, we recently got our um, next greenhouse uh, all set up. And uh, the last video we did, I think we had the frame up and I talked a little bit about ground stakes at that point and our baseboards. Um, that was before we put on the wiggle wire, the end walls, and our covering. So I'm just going to talk about that real quick, um, about some of the things we've done in the meantime. So last weekend, working with a break in the weather, we came out and we got the covering on on a nice still morning. And it's really important that you pick a morning where there's not a whole lot of wind. Uh, we're talking less than two or three miles per hour ideally, um, which around here is darn near impossible to find because the wind's always ripping out here. But uh, we found a nice still morning and uh, we got the covering on. Now there's a lot of different ways that people say uh, to put on coverings, a lot of different opinions out there. My opinion is that the best way to do it without really damaging the covering, that's without stretching the ends, wall, ends out, some people put a rope through the length of it, fold it in half, put a rope through it. Um, I actually just like to fold it in half and get three or four guys on ladders and have two guys climb up on both of the end walls and kind of just work it up. And someone walks then down below and takes uh, this folded over piece of plastic and kind of pushes it with a two by four to kind of work it up over these uh, arches. And uh, once it's about halfway up, fold it over. We flip the folded over ha half down uh, the other side. I found it to be a lot easier uh, for putting up these kinds of structures. And um, we do do double layer. So um, these have special coating. So it's an important thing to do right off the bat is make sure you've got the right side down. So these have uh, infrared coatings and they've also got anti-condensate coatings on the plastic itself. So it's important that that side is down and not out or you just you lose all the benefit of paying a little bit extra for those those fancy coatings. So this is six mil polyethylene double layer and you can see here that it's pretty sturdy stuff. Um, once it's inflated, and I'm gonna talk about that in just a second, it's really hard to um, impact this stuff negatively. Like I said, we get you know 40, 50, 60 mile an hour winds, they just run right off the side of this thing, no problem. So uh, that's how we get the covering on. Uh, you can see it's inflated now. I'll talk about uh, the inflation system here in a second. All right, so uh, this is how we inflate our double layer poly. You're basically just taking two layers of six mil uh, polyethylene plastic and we're blowing air between them. So they're both secured together. They're sandwiched together along the outside. So when we blow the air in, it inflates the two layers and gives us as much as 12 or 16 inches of dead space between our different arches, um, which gives us a great insulative value for really cheap. Um, so uh, this is our blower. It's just a really, it's a pretty low amp blower. It's drawing, let's see, less than half an amp. Um, so it's pretty energy efficient. And you can see we just wired it in using uh, well, using a cord that I snipped off of something else I didn't need. Um, so <laughs> it's just uh, on an extension cord now. We'll we'll put in some uh, some actual permanent designated wiring here pretty soon. Uh, we just got to do it right so it's all to code. And looks good. Um, but the blower is just sucking uh, air from inside our greenhouse. Now you can do this so it pulls air from outside your greenhouse. Um, for us, it's just easier to pull from the inside. Um, and we get enough wind and enough grit uh, ripping around here and enough snow in the air a lot of the time that if we're pulling it in from the outside, we'd probably be drawing in almost as much moisture as we do from just drawing inside. So we did it the easiest possible route. It's attached to our end wall here, which is just, uh, you can see it's just half inch plywood. And uh, we've just bolted that to, the, uh, to some of these supports, to some of these purlins on these end walls. And we just tighten it down and it's a pretty solid, pretty solid end wall. So we'll insulate that here uh, probably in the next few weeks. Put some one inch or two inch blue board on this, seal everything up, make sure it's nice and airtight. Um, it's not as important during the summer, but for next winter, it's gonna be, it's gonna be important to have this thing airtight. And uh, since we've put it in, um, we've had a number of nights down in the teens and this place has stayed in good shape. Uh, it's been a fairly mild winter, but it's amazing how fast the ground thaws out once you put a little plastic over it and heat it up real good. Since the last one, uh, last time we had four our baseboards on, but we hadn't tied them together. 
So you can see here that we just basically on the inside we cut off a chunk of 2x6 and uh, went ahead and used some um, bolts to go ahead and tighten those, uh, these baseboards together and pull them together. And those are just carriage bolts there with, with uh, some nuts and washers. And uh, it's real nice, you know, once you bolt them together, you can, you can uh, tighten them down. Kind of pulls everything together. You're never going to have a perfectly straight baseboard running from one end to the other. So the trick there is just to kind of pull them together so your wiggle wire can follow the contour of the greenhouse um, down the length of it. Uh, you can see we've also got our plastic on here. And uh, we uh, have secured this with wiggle wire channels. So we'll go outside. We'll go here on the, on the uh, north side because the south side's all covered with snow. We had a big old snowstorm two days ago. So we'll go on outside and I'll show you the wiggle wire and how it's uh, basically holding the plastic to these baseboards. All right, so we're outside now. I'm just gonna show you how this channel connects. This is, this aluminum channel here is wiggle wire channel. And you can see we've just bolted it to the frame there with self-tapping screws. And uh, down here, we basically just screwed it in uh, with, with screws, with self-tapping screws. We screw it into that, um, that baseboard there, all the way down, and I like to go, because we're in a high wind load area, we get, sometimes we get 60 mile an hour winds through here. Um, we like to screw it down about every 18 inches or so, just to make sure that channel doesn't separate and pull off of that, that baseboard there. Um, so you can just basically see how this wiggle wire then, this is just a spring wire, it fits inside this channel and go with the PVC coated stuff, okay? It's a little more expensive. Um, when I first started doing these things, I just went with the straight steel wire and it's a big mistake. It really dings your plastic up. So if you're putting all roll up sides on uh, during your summer, you get real limited with that steel wire because it cuts holes in your plastic. So go with the PVC coated stuff and you can just see how it, you know, kind of just works its way into that channel there and um, overlap it a little bit. Some guys do two pieces of wire overlapping each other the whole way. I've never found it necessary. Um, we have some of the worst conditions here um, in the lower 48 really, uh, given our climate and our altitude and the wind loads and the snow loads that we have. And I've never had a problem with a covering getting torn out of one of these channels. So plastic coated or PVC coated um, spring wire Channels screwed down, you know, every 18 inches minimally, and uh, it'll work for you. That plastic then just goes right in. So here's uh, here you can kind of see our finished in wall down here, and uh, it's not quite done. We ran out of time. We had a nasty storm bearing down on us, so uh, we basically just took the top. We took some spare wiggle wire and ran along the outside of the top of our uh, plywood uh, sheets here. And then we just basically use wiggle wire to secure the excess from the roof to the top of those sheets. And that's not a bad way to do it. A lot of people do it that way and leave it there permanently. We will end up putting some plywood up there and insulating it for next winter. Um, but for the time being, it serves its purpose and uh, we can always unfasten it come summer and get a little bit more of a breeze through here uh, once the weather warms up a bit. So. Um, that's it on the greenhouse update. We'll make sure we get you another video here as soon as we get everything tilled up. We are gonna be doing soil ag in here until uh, we have the money to put in some towers, at least on the north side. And um, as soon as we get into that, we're gonna do a few more videos. We're gonna do another video about our roll-up sidewalls too here um, in, the next, uh, in the next few weeks, hopefully. So next week's a big week. We're gonna do all our soil amendment. We're gonna get this place outfitted and we're gonna get it planted. So uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Hopefully you'll, you'll get to see some neat shots as uh, our greenhouse grows. Alrighty, well thanks for tuning in. And um, if you guys got any questions, feel free to post them below. Check out our website for uh, more information. Check out our other YouTube videos. Uh, we're doing our best to answer everyone's questions and to just basically get as much knowledge out there as possible about aquaponics and what we're trying to do here with urban agriculture and vertical agriculture in Laramie, Wyoming. So this is our greenhouse here. We just came in through the front door and this is kind of looking east um, down the rows and columns of uh, towers here. So come on in and I'll explain how everything works. So now we're at the far end of the greenhouse and you can see uh, some of the new towers that have just gone in uh, this last week. And 